Coming up, we cut some holes, fit some lights, cut some more holes, and fit some skylights. And what's this thing? Morning everyone, so we are coming to you from the beautiful scrapyards of Cornwall. Now we're here in search of a horse box window, which we just happen to have found. A few horse boxes, however these windows above me are not coming off. Fortunately however, Ben round here has managed to find one that he's able to get off. So this is quite an exciting stage of the build now because we're on to the bit where we can actually install the windows and the doors and then eventually the insulation and it's going to start looking a little bit more like a camper van. You got it off? Nearly. <laughs> If you can hear me over this uh, chainsaw in the background but we've got our two horse box windows from the scrapyard and I guess the reason we wanted to use these rather than brand new ones is we're trying to use as many sort of secondhand reclaimed materials on the build as possible not just to save on costs but also because it's nice to have like a bit of history to them something a bit older and quirkier and not just brand new yeah. which will kind of fit with our 1979 van a bit better I think Definitely. <laughs> but we are also very skinned so it helps <laughs> We're back from the scrapyard now, we've got our windows, got an absolute bargain on these. So I think we're just going to dry fit them. We've worked out on our SketchUp design roughly where they're going to go, well, exactly where they're going to go actually, to the centimetre. So it's going to go somewhere around here. So all we've got to do now is measure exactly where it's going to go in, end up right like this. Draw around it, with the template around this bit here, the inner, the inner seal, and then cut the bugger out with the angle grinder and hope we've done it right because you can only cut this hole once can't you? If we get it wrong we're going to have a very awkwardly sized hole in the side of our van. So fingers crossed, such some wood, we'll get this right first time and it will look bloody beautiful. <laughs> Because of the uh, slider handle on the back here sticking out, I couldn't put it flat against the edge of the van to sort of draw around it, so I've just cut out this little snazzy stencil, which is the exact size of the frame, like so. So all I've got to do now, whack that on the side of the van, draw around it, and then I can start grinding the hole out. Let's go. in here. Next up we'll be installing the roof skylights and just behind me you can see we've actually installed the first one already. We installed this before we recorded anything because we're going into this with no knowledge at all and we didn't want to film it and pretend we know what we're doing when we clearly don't. So we put one in, we know what we're doing now and we're going to film ourselves installing the second one to show you guys how we've done it. So the first mistake we made with this one was uh, trying to saw the square out from the inside of the van upwards and even though I was wearing eye protection I managed to get some aluminium fragments in my eye and it really hurt so I learned my lesson for this one we're going to be going along the top of the roof very carefully trying not to fall through it of course and we're going to measure out the hole that we need to cut on top of the roof and uh, saw downwards which is a much safer and much more sensible idea so we're going to go get cracking with that now and then we'll show you how we do the rest So I've just made up this wooden frame and this is made to the 28 centimetres wide, a perfect square which the roof vent is going to fit into. This is to make up the thickness basically to allow the bottom and the top to kind of join together 
and pull it all together on the roof. So if you imagine, I'll flip this over, this is the top, that's gonna to be the roof. Imagine that the aluminium sheet is all around here and then underneath, the wooden frames inside the van and then this bottom piece of the skylight will then attach underneath like so. Something like that, it's not going to work properly, there we go. And then that will be screwed in at all corners and it's going to pull it together with the Seager Flex sealant all around. Bring it nice and tight, it's going to be waterproof, it's going to be lovely, let's get stuck in. out a square I'm just going to simply go around each corner drill out the hole and then I'm going to get on with the jigsaw with a aluminium cutting blade in there cut this out nice and good and this time I'm not going to get any shit in my eye <laughs> So holes cut, next step is to get this Seeker Flex. We're using Seeker Flex 522, which is specifically designed to not age and to not crack during like bright sunlight, direct sunlight. So it will last for years up there. It's what most caravan and motorhome people use apparently. So we've gone for it. Not got on with Seeker Flex in the past too well, but we're gonna take their word and give it a go. So anyway, just gonna stick this around the edge, gunk it up, whack it on top, and then we'll show you the next step. Oh, hi there. Hello. Fancy seeing you here. What are we doing now? We are just going to stick it in. So I've just gunked around the edge and then we're going to whack it in. Hinges have to go at the front as well. Spin that round. It should just sit in there nicely, like so. Push down on that. And then we're going to go inside, fit the wooden frame up and then screw the plastic in and it will just pull it all to nice and tight and then the Seeker Flex should go off tonight, hopefully. And there we go. Two working skylights. couple of uh, key things we've learned is to not over tighten the screws or you'll crack the plastic and it seems to be that the long screws go on the sides and the short screws go on the corners is that right I think so yeah I think so but they don't tell but you don't listen to us as we've said many times we don't really know what we're doing <laughs> we just make it up as we go but it looks to be pretty secure obviously the roof's a bit wobbly at the minute we are going to put more supports in very soon very soon, but that is a job for another day. I think we're about done for the day, aren't we? Yeah. Cup of tea time? I think so. Nice. See you all tomorrow. Okay, so while we're smashing out all the windows and the skylights, our porthole for the shower room has just arrived. Really excited about this. I think it's gonna be a really cool, unique feature to have in here. So, got my power tools, got my drill, Let's just start cutting the hole out and stick it in. Lovely. Thankfully it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because it's got a massive flange around it which will cover the uh, not so perfect circle I've cut. 
just going to start marking out where the rivet holes are going to go. And then it's time to put it in. getting the porthole actually stuck in because of the fact that there's the, the frames and the glass are separate and also a little tip if you do get polyurethane adhesive on your acrylic glass um, don't use acetone to get it off because it makes it go all cloudy and terrible just use washing up liquid <laughs> but it's in anyway it looks good and then we can carry on with the rest so I'm taking a rare break in the rain to fit the rear lights onto the van. This is because once we start insulating and building the kitchen units and stuff, it's going to get much harder to access the rear panels. So I've got my drill with a hole saw attachment, that's a 38mm, and I've got a box of lights. We've decided to go for these really retro Land Rover style lights because they're easy to fit, they'll fit against the flat rear panel like this, and we really like the style of them. So what I've already done is start marking out on the van. Don't know if you can see it on camera. Just uh, marking out the areas of the circles I'm gonna cut, making sure the positioning of the lights is all equal on both sides and equally spaced out. So I've marked all my diagrams here. Then all I've gotta do is drill the holes and fit the lights. First hole. So you're joining me a couple of days later after I've realised the mistake I made. Um, the 38mm hole saw I used is in fact too big. It's a pretty good size for the rubber, like it does fit in there. But because of these little tiny screws that we have to undo and drill holes for in order to fit the lights, this hole is unfortunately a bit too big. So I'm not sure quite what we're going to do about this yet. So we've got a 32mm one, tested it on this bit of scrap metal and the light fits very snugly, which I think will be good for water tightness. Ideally, I probably would have gone for a 34, but we're just making do with what we've got. So now we're going to carry on drilling the holes, but with the 32mm hole saw, and then we'll be drilling the tiny little holes in order to fit the lights properly. Right, so all the holes are now drilled in the back of the van. It was a lot more difficult than it probably looks on camera, trying not to let the hole saw wander all over the place, but it's done and I think they're pretty straight. So now we've just got to get these lights, um, take the top off them, undo these little screws and the nuts on the back with the world's tiniest little spanner. <laughs> and then once these are out, uh, we simply get a drill bit, drill the holes in the right places on the van, like so, slot the light in and then do them up on the other side and they'll be in, ready to wire. Okay, welcome back. So today is a new day and we are going to be cutting one final hole in the roof. And it's going to be a huge one. Why are you asking? Well, we're going to be sticking this in. This little acrylic dome is going to be in the overcab sleeping area. It's going to be quite a cool little thing that you can just sort of peek out and look around at the surrounding environment. So we're really excited to get that in. Underneath we have got this silver diningware kind of tray thing that we're going to cut out. We're going to cut this middle section out and then the outer side is going to be a frame that's going to sit up like that underneath the dome. So it's going to look really cool when it's done. So yeah, we've got one final massive cut hole to cut in the roof. A little bit nervous about this today because it's just above freezing and the Seager Flex that we have is not supposed to be used anywhere below 5 degrees and it's kind of best to use it between 15 and 25 degrees. So we're a little bit off that benchmark today. So we've come up with a little idea. We're gonna just dunk the Seeger Flex in some hot water, in a bowl of hot water, warm it up a little bit, so it should come out the tube properly. And yeah, we're just gonna see what happens. Oh, we're also gonna use a hairbrush. We're gonna use a 
um, a hairbrush, a... Uh... We're also going to warm up the metal roof with a hairdryer and just to sort of get rid of all the moisture and hopefully warm it up so that the Seeker Flex can be applied nicely. So let's get out there, let's get stuck in and cut one final hole. the rim we've stuck the dome in place now we just got to drop these bolts through and then we'll go and do them up from the inside like so wow what a difference that makes to the light in the front that is brilliant very very happy with that so the metal frame the uh, plate that we've got that we showed you earlier. We're not going to put that on just yet. We're going to cut out the inside of that plate and then just use the outer lip as a frame for that once the insulation's in. So we won't do that for now, but we'll keep it in mind and we'll show you how we're going to do that later on. So I've got one final job and it is actually another hole in the roof. It's the mushroom vent that's going to go in the bathroom area. So it's only about this big. I'm not too worried about cutting that one out. So one final hole to cut and then it's all finished. So this is the mushroom vent. Just this little thing here, it comes in two parts. So this is the roof part, and this is the bit that you screw in underneath. I'm gonna leave this bit off again today because I want to screw the insulation in between this. So for now, I'm just gonna gunk around this edge here, once I've cut the hole out, whack it down and put some weight on it to help seal it properly. And then at a later date, hopefully in a few days time when the insulation arrives, we can get this clamped in nicely and then that will help to sort of get rid of the condensation and all the moisture that's going to build up in the shower room. And uh, yeah, hopefully stop the van getting too damp because we know that damp is a huge issue in vans, especially in our LDV convoy, and we do not want a repeat of that in this van. So let's get up on the roof, cut the hole out, stick it down, and then I think that is the last hole that we need to cut in this poor van. After that, we can start on the next big task, which is the insulation. I couldn't find a compass, so the next best thing obviously was to use a saucepan uh, just to get the actual curve. I've drawn out the measurements, so we'll just use this to get the nice curve around the square and uh, hope for the best. Improvising. Something like that. So the mushroom vent's on, it's in place, we're just going to weigh it down with this toolbox while it dries. So over the last couple of videos we've been doing, we might have been giving off a very false impression that we kind of know what we're doing. But I'm going to put that to bed now because we don't. All the pop rivets that we've put around the roof edge here that I'm touching have holes in them. They are not waterproof and it's been letting in not loads of water but just a small amount of water. So we've now got the job of going around and waterproofing each individual pop rivet with some sealant. It's absolutely freezing up here, the wind's blowing and it's probably about minus one at the minute so yeah loving life but it's got to be done and then hopefully it will be watertight. Well that's it we are relieved all the windows and skylights and everything uh, all installed now we've not got to cut any more big holes out of this van thank god and you know what else it means? No more up and down the ladders. <laughs> it's done my knees in badly, but anyway, we are so happy. It's Look, looking. That whole funky little dome, I mean, isn't that amazing? I just love it. It's going to be so fun when there's a bed in here, you know, kids are staying in here or whatever, you can just poke your head up and see what's going on. It's I just wicked. love it. Yes, <laughs> so chuffed. So that's it for now. The next video is going to be insulating, putting panels in, and putting the plywood up. So then it's really going to start transforming it in here and actually start looking like a van. 
that you might want to stay in sometime. <laughs> so for now, we're over and out. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the story so far. And uh, remember on our Patreon we're releasing exclusive little mini video diaries about the progress which are much more up to date than our YouTube videos. So the link for that is below and we hope to see you on the next video. Bye! Peace.